Hey, welcome back. Hey, welcome back. Hey, welcome back. Hey, welcome back. This is a dangerous intro because I can get copyright strikes doing this. And so for that reason, I will not be doing this again for one more time. One. So today's discussion is going to be really interesting. So let's start with the expected dates for J-Mains. I think the J-Mains will be held around the last week of July or in the first or second week of August. Now I can divide you people into two categories, majorly two categories. The first category of students who are happy after listening to this because now they are relieved that they kind of sort of know what the exam dates are and they have worked very hard in the time that they got. So to all of you guys, congratulations, good job, keep going with the same momentum. Just, it's just a matter of another 25-30 days. Don't worry about the results, just focus on your preparation. So the second category of students are right now, you know, feeling bad about themselves and they are guilty for having wasted all the time that they got. And they have this one question in mind, which is, do I continue preparing or do I stop? I would ask you to continue preparing, but this time with a slight change in your final goal. Initially, your goal was to score a great rank in JE mains and in JE advanced. But now you have around 30 to 45 days left. Let's make the goal realistic. So we will change the goal to let's clear J mains and J advanced. This is slightly challenging yet achievable. So to clear J advanced, what percentile will be required? In the worst to worst case, according to previous year data, it will be 92.5 percentile. How much marks is required to score 92.5 percentile? Again, in the worst to worst case, 140 marks, which means 35 to 40 questions must be answered. Out of 75 questions, 35 to 40 questions must be answered. Right now, just think of those subjects you're strong at. In those subjects, narrow down to the easy chapters. Easy chapters in the sense, it is easy to study and they are high scoring. For example, in mathematics, you can narrow down to statistics and mathematical reasoning. So these are two chapters, it can give you eight marks in total. Direct questions are asked from these chapters. Just formula based, they won't twist the question in any way. And if you go to physics, Electromagnetic waves, 4 marks, modern physics, 8 marks. So totally you can get 12 marks from those. The way you have to answer a physics question is that as and when you read the question, you write down the data. For example, let's say the first sentence of a question reads, an ideal monoatomic gas is placed in a cylindrical container. What I do is that after I finish reading the sentence, I take the rough note or A4 sheet water was given to me and I write ideal gas and I write mono f is equal to 3 degree of freedom is equal to 3 and I draw a cylinder. This is how physics questions are solved. And then in chemistry again periodic properties 4 marks atomic structure another 4 marks. If you're doing modern physics half of atomic structure is already done. The other half of atomic structure is the solution to Schrodinger's equation, the asymptotic quantum number, principal quantum number, the magnetic quantum number and then the graphs containing psi psi square that is the wave function. That's all what's remaining. So if you make this approach, start with the easy chapters, move the moderate chapters and then find it in difficult chapters. But don't do those chapters which are very difficult. Like in physics, don't do rotation or don't do optics. If you have not started, don't do they. They themselves will take one month's time. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is not Sumay, but it's time to reveal the sponsors of today's video. So today's video is sponsored by Geeks for Geeks, one of the very popular website among college students. You know what, I for a very long time was waiting to promote such a website where or such a product where I have personally been benefited. I was a maths by student in 11 12th and first semester came Python and that's when I found Geeks for Geeks. The link to all the courses are given in the description box. You can buy whatever course interests you. You want, you want a course in HTML, it's there. Basics of C++, Basics of Python Programming, Data Structures and Algorithm using Python or C++. You want to do backend development, every single thing is there. Right now. They have a sale going on and you can use my coupon code nikhil 10 to get an additional 10% discount. Let me just read you the benefits of one course, Data Structures with Python. You can see that you get a lifetime access to the course, you get internship opportunities at Geeks for Geeks, you get access to the Geeks for Geeks job portal, you have track-based learning, you get a course completion certificate and you have assessment tests. How better can this get? Don't forget to use the code of nikhil 10 Now prepare that much syllabus to answer 40 questions. Now let's say you are not able to find the answer for 5 questions in your examinations. That's very common. It happens always. There's no problem. You still have 35 questions in your hand. So we play it safe. Now for you guys, it's not only the syllabus, but your mentality too. 
plays a very very pivotal role now consider this as a game where you're given a particular task and you have two chances or two attempts to complete the task now there are certain rules that you have to follow while you're preparing for the game and certain rules that you have to follow while you're playing the game so these are rules so they must be followed so rules to be followed during preparation rule number one do not ever use your phone as soon as you wake up rule number two fix your wake up time wake up at the same time every single day if you're not able to do it ask your parents to wake you up at that particular time they will definitely do that for you rule number three start your day by solving easy questions and then move on to the difficult questions otherwise you will unnecessarily get demotivated rule number four switch off your mobile phones while you're studying by mobile phone i mean any source of distraction any day your self-study time must be greater than the time that you watch lectures while you're taking breaks make sure that you don't watch tv or youtube in the sense not go to a source of distraction and ask please distract me no if you want to exercise do it if you want to go to the terrace take a walk do it or just see to that you don't get distracted if you're not able to complete that amount of syllabus that you're targeted before your examination there is absolutely no problem in that if you have put your 100 percent you would be really satisfied with whatever you have done and that's enough no problem if you're not able to complete the syllabus let me show it to you in a different perspective while everybody else has to answer 75 questions in three hours you have to answer only 40 questions in three hours your goal is entirely different from their goal your goal is to clear the exam and that's it and just a few days before your exam do not do any activity where you have no idea of what information you will get you will definitely have off days where you don't feel like studying anything it is absolutely normal avoid overthinking and listening to music with lyrics while you're studying rules to be followed while you're writing your examination rule number one the time you spend on a particular question does not matter because you're answering a limited number of questions but overall give a particular time for a subject always write your exam in the full screen mode i have told this several times and the reasons are in the previous videos do not look at the timer very often if it makes you anxious Rule number four, do not read all the questions in one single stretch and then start answering. Because what you do here is that if you're not able to answer one question, you know what question will come next. But in case you have not read the questions, if you're not able to answer a particular question, at least you have the hope that you'll be able to answer the next question. Rule number five, start with the subject that you're strongest in. It need not be chemistry. If you do not know the answer to a particular question, don't guess. Now, if you follow this, you'll understand the importance of rules. And thank you for watching.